This is Carolina This Week. Carolina This Week with Tim McGinnis. Good morning and thanks for joining us. We have a good show for you this morning. The money man, the state's money man, South Carolina treasurer, Curtis Loftus is joining me now. Mr. Loftus, this is your second time on the show. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Thank didn't you didn't scare much. you off the last time. No, I enjoyed myself a lot. Okay. First question, I like to remind people what exactly the state treasurer does. So if you can kind of just let the people know real quick what, what you're doing in Columbia. Sure. Well, we're the state's private banker. I handle all the tax money. We bank about 50 billion dollars. That's a lot of money for a small state like South Carolina, but that's the retirement system, that's all the state agencies, it's all the state higher education. It's a lot of money and I take my responsibility seriously. We are really stepping up our efforts to audit our funds properly. We're, we're going out and doing things that haven't been done in years. We're finding each and every bank account the state has. We're finding each and every CD and loan. I mean, we're really going at this so uh, just like you would manage your own family's income or business. So I'm excited about it. How is the state doing financially right now? We've heard a lot about, and I think we're going to talk about in a few minutes, some oh, yeah. problems with the DOT, that your office has, has, been, has been trying to keep a closer eye on that. How are things going as far as the state goes? Well, surprisingly pretty well. I mean, re revenues keep coming in, and the economy is not great else, uh, all around the country. You know, South Carolina is not a rich state. We don't have those highs, but we don't have those lows. We're kind of clicking right along, and so revenues are pretty steady. Uh, we are having some problems sporadically at certain state agencies. Department of Transportation is one of those. Their cash flow uh, processes are awful, and uh, we've highlighted that in the paper as well as others. So I'm hoping that we bring that to resolution because, you know, that affects I-73. And that's something I wanted to talk to you about because you were mentioning before the show that it may not be Washington that stands in the way of I-73. You're saying it could be our own Department of Transportation? That's right. You know, there are a lot of permits that have to be done. Uh, you know, you go through this long process and the commission votes on what roads should be built. Well, this is that great interchange right there on 95. It kind of begins the process. Mm -hmm. Well, all that's done. Now we have to look at the financing part of this. Well, in order to finance something, it's, it's like your private li life. It's in your own business. If, if you want to borrow money, you've got to have good credit. You've got to demonstrate to the bank that you're worth that money. So what we've got here is a DOT that can't manage its cash. I've been asking for information since August the 7th. And what is it, October the 7th now. And so that's a long time. I can't get that information. They promise it, they promise it, they promise it. How this relates to I-73 is we've got to finance it. So that means we've got to sell bonds. In order to sell bonds, we've got to have a product. We've got to say that the state is a worthy credit customer. And right now we'd have a hard time. Investors are going to say to us, Mr. Loftus, how do we know we're going to get paid? And so that's what we've got to do. I've been urging the governor and the secretary of, tra of transportation to make sure that they flush this information as soon as they can. The sooner it's out in the public, the sooner that we know what the problem is, and the sooner we can fix it. And then we can get about the business of building roads. How are we doing with ratings agencies right now? Are any of them looking into South Carolina? Are we running any risk of being downgraded like we've seen the country downgraded? Well, you always have a risk. <laughs> uh, the treasurer's office is very careful about those relationships. I inherited, when I became treasurer, some very sober and uh, responsible folks. They manage these relationships every week. And I'll tell you what I found out about the rating agencies is they are very bright, very disciplined people. And they know South Carolina. So they ask us intelligent questions and we give them intelligent answers. And so we're not, uh, we don't have any you know, uh, sword of Damocles hanging over our head or anything, <laughs> but we always have to be mindful. The rating agencies do a lot of good things. People don't think about it. They think about they only rate us for our credit. But what they also do is they enforce honor and integrity in how we handle our, our money. As your treasurer, I've been working with this accountability and transparency. I mean, I'm preaching it everywhere I go. And you'd be surprised where when you preach real accountability and transparency, people get it. I mean, I leave rooms and their heads are shaking, they understand it. The problem we have at DOT is certainly one of those now. And when you're talking transparency, should every citizen in the state be able to look into every department in the state and see how the money, the tax money is being spent? Yeah, and, and that's important to have those numbers out there on the internet, but there's really more to it than that. The average person doesn't have that kind of time. You know, the average South Carolinian is working hard. Maybe they're working two jobs or three jobs. 
maybe they're looking for a job. We got to be mindful of that. And you know, if you're a young couple and you got two or three kids and you're raising them from work to the soccer field, you don't have a lot of time to worry about us. So what we've got to do is make sure that the people understand you can trust us. That means we've got to be honest and we've got to be honest at every turn. Little things, like I put my calendar online. I want people to see that I'm working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I'm not living at my beach house, calling it in. Those things are important. I think, you know, I, I decided not to take a state car because, you know, I get paid a fair amount of money to be treasurer. I make three times what the average person in the state makes. They don't get free cars. I don't believe I should either. So we're going to put those kind of expenses. You know, how much money is the state saving? I can't make other officers follow me, but we can start a conversation. We can get people thinking, well, you know, if this guy can tell us how many hours he works, if he can show his travel expenses, why can't the rest of you do that? And so once we start, you know, it's just a change in culture. Anybody who works at a business, they know they have to justify their time mm -hmm. to their boss. In politics, we do it the other way around. We, you know, we make people, we say to people, trust me, I'm working hard for you. <laughs> well, that's not a good deal. That's not a good deal at all. You've been state treasurer now for 10 months. 10 so. months, yeah. What, when you, when you took over, what surprised you when you started opening up the ledgers? Was there anything that, that kind of shocked you, maybe disappointed you a little bit? Well, the first thing was a very positive nature. The, the permanent people at the, at, the, at the treasurer's office, you know, people like myself, we come and go. We get elected, we get thrown out. You know, we're not that important. What's important are the folks who work there. I have 60 people there, and I'll tell you, they are great people. When I walk out the door, no matter if I come to an interview like this or if I go give a speech, I know they've got my back. I know that I don't have to worry about them doing something silly. They're serious people and they manage state's business. Now, but there are things I've changed. Like we haven't had a full gas audit, a government accounting standards audit since 1988. Way too long. So we're having that. We're, we're enforcing transparency and accountability in our office. I filed suit on behalf of the taxpayers of the state against a bank in New York for $200 million. And the very first thing I did was put the litigation online, but also the compensation agreements for the lawyers. I want people to know who does business with the state, who's making money, who's not. It's just part of it. Once people understand that we're being truthful, then they can rest easy. I want them to know when they send a dollar to Columbia, they don't have to worry about fraud, waste, and abuse. It sounds like you are fighting the good old boy system then. That's uh, kind of what you're trying to take down through accountability and transparency. Right. Is that, that's is that exactly part right. of it? You know, when I ran, it was a funny thing. You know, nobody had ever beat a Republican incumbent in a statewide primary. They said it couldn't be done. They said that just the cars weren't lined up that way. Well, not only did I do that, but I won every single county. And then in the general election, I got more votes than anybody in the history of the state. Now, why is that? Because I talked really honestly to people, and I told them that, it's all about stopping business as usual. And you know, I'm, I'm not making friends inside that full block area around the Capitol building. You know, those highly placed bureaucrats and elected officials don't always love me, but I don't care. I don't work for them. I work for the 4.6 million people of this state. I've traveled a lot around the world. I can live anywhere I want to. And I always come back to South Carolina because our people are great and they deserve a higher standard of care. You know, we're, I'm a Baptist. A lot of people in this state are. Mm -hmm. Many of us are Protestant anyway. We understand what it means to be a servant. For some reason in politics, we flip that over. We expect the people to serve the politicians, and we've got to change that. And so it's exciting. You know, I'm like I said, I'm not making a lot of friends inside that special interest crowd in the state house, but out in, in in the in the state, I think people understand exactly what I'm doing. One of the big stories since you've taken office was the Amazon deal, that was nearly shuttered at the last minute. What do you think of that deal? Do you think that deals like that go against accountability and transparency? Well, I mean, I think it could have been more accountable and, and, uh, and more transparent, but I don't really study those deals as much as you might think because those are, those are public policy. The governor and the General Assembly are going to sort those things out, and I don't really have a say. Where I come in is after the fact. What I try to say is, okay, if you promise this and if it involves money, I'm going to make sure that happens. If you promise that X amount of dollars are going to be spent on X amount of projects, I'm going to make sure. Um, we, we did, there was an economic incentive package done before I came into office. Now we've surprised everybody because I'm asking for a receipt. And everybody's shocked. I don't, I don't want to name names now because it's not important. They just didn't have any idea that somebody was going to come along and say, hey, I want a receipt for my money. But I, I told the guy, I said, I go to Cracker Barrel, I buy lunch for eight bucks, I get a receipt. If I send you millions of dollars, I'm going to want a receipt. And so we're, we're tracking down all these deals, and that's what we're going to do 
with every single dollar in South Carolina. And I understand you might have some money for some of the people watching out there. Oh, that's the best part of my job is Palmetto Payback. Let's talk about that when we ah. come back. Stay with us. He might have some money for you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Carolina this week. State Treasurer Curtis Loftus is my guest this morning. Palmetto Payback, through this program, a lot of people have gotten some money back. Maybe not huge amounts, some maybe some huge amounts. Right. Tell me how that works and how people can, can check to see if they have anything. Well, if you're in the kitchen, stop what you're doing and pay attention because this is the <laughs> coolest deal and best offer you get all day. We have a lot of people's money in this state. I mean, a lot of people. It's my job to collect money from all around the state, whether it's insurance companies, hospitals, employers, utility companies, colleges, schools, anybody. They send that money into the treasurer's office. And then it's my job to use our super duper software to find the people and give them their money back. Every day we give back money. We've had times when we were out pushing the project hard where we give back a million dollars a week. Wow. Think about that. I've given back as much as $66,000 to one lady. Every day I sign the letters that go out to people who get more than $1,000. I don't do the ones smaller than that. But every day I sign 10 or 15 letters. Wow. So if you go to the treasurer's website, you know, just Google State Treasurer's I'll Carolina. put a link to it on my Facebook oh, page. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and, and it, it, once you get there, all you do is you plug in your, in your name. If you've got a name that can be misspelled, do that. If you're female, be especially careful. Put in your maiden name. Because the lady who I gave $66,000 to, that was an insurance policy that her parents had taken out for her when she was a child. They paid it up right there on the spot, but it was in her maiden name. So she was 66 years old before she got her check. And her parents had, had been passed for 10 or 20 or 30 years. I, I'm not quite sure. Right. So uh, now, here's another thing. When you get there, don't just put your name in. Put your family's name in. Put, put your old buddy's name in. Put your old girlfriend's and boyfriend's name because I can tell you, it's a great news when you can pick up the phone and call somebody and say, guess what? Take me to lunch and I'll give you $1,000. Where does this money come from? You mentioned, uh, I guess that's kind of like an annuity, uh, an insurance policy that, that somebody had that may have that's forgotten right. about. What else is there? Well, how many times did you not get your deposit back from your cable bill because you moved too quickly? Or if you had a dispute with an employer? Or sometimes even lawsuits end up in escrow accounts. And after seven years, they, they dump all those escrow accounts. Your utility deposits. It all is so many things. I mean, literally just about anywhere that you can leave money. Old bank accounts. That's a big one. Old bank accounts. Because you know, you, maybe you don't. You're, especially when you're younger, you don't balance them correctly, and you think you didn't have any money, ended up having more. So um, you'd be surprised. The federal government, everybody's in on the game, and we've got money. We give. Gosh, I think we'll probably get 60 or 80 million dollars back in November that we're going to get in new money to give out. Now we get money every week. Wow. But we get one big lump sum like that. And I will be surprised if you if you go to that website and you type in your name and type in your family's name. I'll be very surprised if you don't find some money for you. Wow. Well. Yeah. We, I'll I'll take you up on that. That's right. I found it for my brothers and my sisters. I found it for a cousin of mine. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Visit facebookcom slash Tim McGinnis WPDE. I'm going to put a link up to that. And if you if you get any money back through the treasurer's office, leave a comment. Let me know. I'd like That's to I'd like to hear. Uh, you want your five percent? Yeah, I, I want a cut. <laughs> so uh, a, I love to have a cut up because we get back as as I said, sometimes a million dollars a week. Wow. We've had to slow down on promoting the program for a little bit because our software became just overburdened. Now, actually, as we sit now, we're installing new software. It costs a ton of money, but it'll allow us to, to tender our business more properly. We'll be able to give money back faster. We'll be able to find people you know, more quickly. So we're excited about it. Back on the transparency, government to me seems so huge that how could it be, how could it be accountable? How can you right. make government accountable? Because there are so many different departments, so many different agencies. How, how do you go about trying to make government accountable, especially the guy who, who has the checkbook? Well, that's one of the reasons. We've had, I've had agencies call me and tell me, like in the dark of night type of things, what are we doing wrong? You know, they don't want to be uh, in the crosshairs. What we've got to make sure is that our, our government officials stand up. You know, we've got to say, we're not going to put up with it. Well, I'm not concerned about the next election. I had a great life before I was treasurer. If I have to go back in four years, I mean, I have another great life. You know, I'm having a great life now. I'm, it, that's not important. What's important is I do the people's business. And so a lot of that, it, it's just incremental. Uh, we're really discussing DOT a lot, but I can tell you there are a lot of state agencies that are looking at this and say, it could be me next. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's important. We have a problem. I, was, I sit on the, on the South Carolina Investment Commission. We have $26 billion of the retirement funds. I am not satisfied with the accountability and transparency there. I've been working hard. 
Um, and let's just say there's more to that story coming. But even though I'm on that commission, and even though maybe it won't reflect well on me just because of association, we've got to have accountability. We've got to have transparency, and I'm not going to stop. Early on in your tenure <laughs> so far, you butted heads a little bit with the governor. How's your relationship with the governor now? Is it, are you all on the same page? Well, it's never been personal. It's always about business. And, you know, the, people say, well, you, you butt heads with the governor, but she's the biggest player. I mean, when you're the governor of the state, you're the chief executive officer, so more things can go wrong in your department than anybody else's because you're bigger. Her, her, I'm the treasurer, she's the governor. It's here and here. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's just more likely to have things go wrong. But I can't be concerned if it's the governor or if it's a leading senator or whoever it is. If we find things that aren't right, we're going to speak out. Now, are they looking at, looking at me awful hard? Yeah. Uh, I had a buddy of mine, a very smart guy. He says, not only are you building a house of glass, but you're building a house of magnifying glass. <laughs> and I thought it was pretty clever. They're going to find something because I'm going to make a mistake. I'm flesh and blood. But I don't care because I know that if I keep pushing, if I push, I push, I push, then we will move the goalpost. You know, we will make sure that South Carolina is more transparent. And it's not going to make everybody happy. And it's going to be uncomfortable. And when they find me doing something wrong, you know, I'm gonna, somebody's going to buy me a free meal and I'm going to forget to list it and it'll be an $8 problem and it'll be on the front page of the newspaper. I don't care. I'm ready to be embarrassed because the goal is to make South Carolina transparent. Hypothetically, after your four-year term, would you think about seeking another office outside of? I don't know. I, you know, I get asked that a lot. Um, I don't know. I'm in about two years, I'll worry about it. You know, every day we work, well, we started this morning at 7 o'clock. We'll get home tonight at 7, 8 o'clock, something like that. And uh, it just never stops. We work six, seven days a week. So I'll, I'll stop worrying, worrying about that in a year or two, but I've got to accomplish this now. Like, you know, I'm out there. One reason I talk about this, when I say I'm going to do transparency, I'm going to do accountability, is because once you say it, you got to do it. Yeah. You know, that's part of, that's part of it. Well, I'm going to try to hold you accountable over your next few years in office. Thanks for being with me Thank this you morning. very much. I appreciate your time. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back.